I think we've been a part of that. You know, I think um, when we went to the Final Four in 1999, because it was on TV and everybody in America got to see us beat Tennessee, which was the David versus Goliath, basically, I think that's when the interest really started to build. And I think if that game had not been on TV, um, some of our future recruits wouldn't have had the opportunity to see that and want to be a part of our program. You know, Elena Beard watched that game on TV, Monique Curry. Um, so as uh, we have grown and the media attention has grown at the same time, so I think it's really helped our program along a good bit. I think that we've been successful, you know, that always helps. And I think that we've had some great players here um, and great people that the general public, I think, enjoys watching. I think the fact that we share the ball so much, you know, we've led the nation uh, several years in assists, and we shoot a high percentage, and we score a lot of points, and I think that's it's a fun game to watch. I've had so many people that email me and say they prefer to watch us over many of the other teams and some of the men's teams as well because it's such great team basketball. I think that it's, it's great for the women's game, and we've had many games where you can see women's basketball, you know, slowly climbing up, you know, the popularity of the sport, but um, also I think it says a lot about Duke that... We have students here who appreciate you know, what we're doing because I think that they work just as hard as we do in different areas. And I think that you, there's a certain level of respect um, that's there between the student body and you know, our team. It's easy to get excited about a team that's undefeated as well, um, you know, and ranked number one. And with all the, the media hype, it's easy to get excited about that. And um, you, know, you, you want your school to do well. And I think that you know, our success right now is uh, you know, carrying over to the student body and becoming more noticeable. And, um, you know, it's just great to see the support that we're getting. The team did surprise me early on. I'm not surprised now by anything that they accomplished, but when you consider all that we lost and, and the fact that we didn't have Shantae Black as well, uh, and I knew how difficult our schedule was going to be both non-conference and within the conference, um, I, I've been very pleasantly surprised at how we've uh, really risen to the occasion um, every time we've been challenged, either at home or on the road. I think our seniors, you know, our seniors have set the tone in all of the big games. And then, uh, and then Abby Wainer and Juanisha Smith, they've been through the wards. When you've been to the championship game in the NCAA tournament, you, you have great experiences. I mean, you know what it's all about to go into hostile environments and play in front of big crowds and on TV. So they all, they all have had great experiences. They've set the tone. And then our young players have just been... Um, They've been great followers, and uh, they've been willing to, to uh, just kind of follow the lead of our seniors and, and our experienced players, and, and they've really gone in with no fear. I've been really proud uh, of the freshmen. We have never talked about it. We, we uh, Not the record, not the rankings, not, not any of it. And uh, so I don't think it's phased us at all. And we understand, and we talked about after the Carolina game, that it's a new season now. That, that regular season was great. It's over. And now everybody's zero and zero. So it's not, we're not trying to continue any kind of a streak or a record anymore. We're beginning anew. Expectations that are surrounding our team will never be as high as expectations that we have for ourselves. So I think that we set the bar for ourselves. Therefore, nothing really phases us. Um, you know, the way that we look at it, now it's, now it's wide open again. It's, uh, it's a brand new season. Um, and yes, we did accomplish a lot, and we're proud of that. But we're uh, nowhere near where, um, where we want to be. I, th I think so. I feel like I'm having a lot of fun. I don't feel nearly as s stressed uh, as maybe I felt in the past, but I think I was calmer last year than the year before, so maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know, but I, don't, I, have, a really good, uh, I have a really good feel with this team, and we have a great relationship. I think we, we're um, very comfortable with one another, and, and I think it's, it's just a, it's a really good feeling. There's a great level of comfort when I'm, no matter what the situation, uh, when I'm out on the floor. Yeah, I haven't noticed many huge changes. Um, I don't think that's part of what, you know, makes her so successful. That obviously she learned a lot from last year, but she still has that intensity and that desire and passion that makes her who she is. And I think that last year only added to that. There's a change between me and her because we've just had a chance to let our relationship grow and. I've been around her for another year, and we're, um, you know, I'm more comfortable with each other. And um, but I, I, don't, I haven't noticed like a huge change from the way that she approached things last year because last year she won a national championship, and this year she wants a national championship. So I don't think she's doing many things differently. I, I guess she could be a little bit more relaxed, but 
I don't notice it because what I see is, um, I said this earlier, is that just she's so intense, so passionate, and um, you know, I, I don't think that that that's slipped at all. That's what makes her who she is and makes her successful is that desire that she has. And by no means has that faltered at all this year. I send emails to Stephanie all the time because I don't want to bother Kay too much. So I send emails to Kay and Stephanie, but probably Stephanie before and after every single game that they play. Um, just supporting her because I knew she, especially when she was the acting head coach, she was in a, v a very tough situation. And, uh, and then with Kay, I've just sent her a couple of books and um, just a couple of letters. And I, I want to be as unobtrusive as possible and just um, she's got so much going on. So just on the sidelines kind of supporting her as, as best I can. I mean, we all want our own team to win, and if our own team can't win, we certainly want NC State to win. I give so much credit to, to their entire program, to their, all of their assistants have had to take on incredible roles, and Kay has just been, you know, when you think about, when you think about the job that I've done this year, it, it's easy. <laughs> My job has been so easy when you compare it to the job that Kay and her staff and her players have done this year. I'm, I'm simply amazed, uh, inspired. It's been a great act, I think, of courage uh, for, for Kay and for her staff. Every day is a, is a great act of courage and inspiration, I think, to all of us. I, we're glad they're not on our side of the bracket. We know we've got uh, a, you know, our own battles to fight, um, so it's, it's hard. You can't really look ahead, but you know we're, we'll let them play for. I'd rather have them play for the second time, you know, than us potentially play potentially play for a, a third time. Uh, either one of those teams. When we were at Virginia, they gave us all that we could handle. Um, that was a that was a that was a battle. Um, so they worry me. And then obviously, um, Florida State gave us a great game down there, and um, NC State. They're, they're playing with so much emotion and passion right now. I think, I don't think there's anybody that really wants to play them at this point. We'll let them duke that game out, kind of beat each other up before we play them. So, um, you know, that's, that's definitely a bonus right now, um, you know, as well as hoping that we can get the Raleigh and Greensboro um, regions. Um, I think it's another bonus to beating Carolina that last game. But, you know, either way, whether we had to play Carolina and Maryland, both both in the um, ACC tournament, um, you know, I'd be just as happy with that because it means more good games for us. So. You know, I think that this year the one thing that we've been stressing is it's a team. We're balanced and we have a team, but it's very obvious that Lindsay is the leader of this team. And, you know, in, in the games that are not as close, um, I think that balance is especially noticeable. And in the big games, Lindsay's dominance and leadership is especially, especially noticeable. So I think that's in the big games that Lindsay takes over. Um, and I think it says a lot about her as a player that she, you know, has that ability in her to just be a dominant type of player that just takes over a game. Because you can have as much talent and skill in the world, but you still won't be a dominant player. But I think Lindsay is one of those players. And the game, the game gets close. Um, none of us panic. There's, it's not chaos. It's, you know, we're not back on our heels. We're constantly attacking because that's Lindsay's mindset, and Lindsay's the leader of this team, and we all feed off of her. Yeah. Well, I think she worked on her game a lot too. I, um, you, you, know, you can see it in her numbers. You can see the way she's been playing. That she's gotten better each year. And, um, you know, last year we had Monique, and Monique is a natural scorer. And like you said, Lindsay, you know, filled her role last year. She got Mo the ball. Um, you know, she played great defense. Um, but this year we did lose a lot of scoring in Mo and Misty. And, um, you know, Lindsay had the ability to pick up the slack, and I think she also worked on it this summer, though, too. Every player has a couple of um, scouts, and uh, we try to choose the scouts uh, according to the player. So if they're from an area, uh, we might have them scout a team from that area. The seniors always get the, the big games. But, um, so they, they will be in charge of scouting two or three opponents with a coach. Each coach has their scouting as well. So, for instance, Lindsey Harding, we just finished with Carolina. Lindsey Harding had Carolina with me, which means we watch tape on Carolina before we play the Carolina game. Uh, we talk about the individual players. I give her all of their stats, their cumulative stats. So she has to type up the player profiles on each player, the name, the stats, and then um, their tendencies and how we're going to defend them. So we, she and I talk about that together. We watch tape together. I show her basically the offenses that they're running. Now I, I type up or, and write up the game plan and write down all their offensive sets. 
and then uh, and I put together the highlight tape. So then the day before the game, we'll watch the tape. And uh, before we watch the tape, we go through the scouting report. So Lindsay stands in front of the team and talks about the player personnel. That's her responsibility. And I'll stand in front of the team and I'll talk about their overall tendencies offensively, defensively, and what our game plan is. And then we'll watch the videotape. And then we go out on the floor and uh, go over uh, how we're going to defend them and how we're going to attack them. And kids tend to watch tape on themselves of our team. They watch themselves. But when you're watching tape of an opponent, then they really learn more about the game and the sets. And, um, and it's also a bonding time, I think, for the coach and the player. It's not just about becoming a better basketball player or investing in the scouting report of an, uh, of an opponent. It's also about just spending one-on-one -on -one time with a player where at the end of the scouting, we end, may end up talking about how they're doing in school, their personal, you know, other things. So I think it's just beneficial for a lot of different reasons. Well, it really helps, I mean, not just from my own scout, but just seeing everything that our coaches put into it, you're able to, to know what to look for now. So when I'm just watching a game just for, like, pleasure, I notice things now that I wouldn't have noticed before because you're more attentive to a player's tendencies and to a team's tendencies and, you know, watching their offense more you know, uh, closely to see what different options they run or whether it's the same set that they just ran last time. So it really, I mean, it helps, um, I think, just your general basketball knowledge um, when they put us in these kind of situations where you have to be looking for certain things. And then watching it with a coach, they kind of walk you through the steps that they do too. We did a scouting report on our own team. And, you know, it's not, it's not always easy to um, have your, you know, teammates tell you what your weaknesses are. But that makes us that much better and stronger as individuals, which then makes us a better team. To be able to, to realize that, yes, these are my weaknesses, my teammates recognize that, and that's what I need to work on.